Uh, and I'm pleased to say this morning that I'm delighted to be here. I want to give my congratulations to Mr. Dreyer on reclaiming the rural seat. And we uh, are very keen on our side to make our case before you today. Um, I'm, actually, my head is somewhat spinning because not 20 minutes ago, the new speaker of the House of Representatives stood where you are and said he was going to be listening to people. But the first order of business before the House which came from the delegates who this rule disenfranchises, not only the delegate of the District of Columbia, but of all the territories, and they didn't get to say a word. So my head is somewhat spinning uh, at that, uh, that point. And we hope to try at least give them unanimous consent so that they can try to get some uh, message into the uh, record. Uh, but it's, uh, again, part of the rhetoric of the last campaign that keeps spinning in our heads. Uh, all we want to do, they said, was to bring down the deficit. Uh, we're going over the cliff, and we've got to bring down the deficit. As we stand here today on the brink of a new session of Congress, the concern about deficits has disappeared from everything but the press releases. Under the new majority rules, the other side would essentially gut pay-go, the pay-as-you-go rules, adapted by Democrat majorities in the House and Senate in 2007, under which tax cuts or increases in entitlement spending must be offset by increases of entitlement cuts, and it gave us the biggest surplus we have ever had under President Clinton. It was a hallmark of Democrat leadership, and we were proud of it. We adhered to responsible spending levels and affordable tax cuts and took sensible steps toward controlling the deficit, but not today. The talk about belt tightening and deficit reduction is going to be thrown out the window so they can free themselves to have hand out even more tax credits for their friends and corporations. Under these proposed rules, notes the Washington Post, tax cuts for the wealthiest are fully protected, but tax help for those at the other end of the income spectrum? Forget about it. Obviously, the New York Times and the Washington Post and other respected news organizations have cried foul at this sleight of hand. In recent days, editorials have appeared slamming this hypocrisy and phony attempt at fiscal austerity. And I would like to ask unanimous consent to enter those columns into the record. Without objection. What seems crystal clear to me is that the other side has doubled down and adopted the mentality of former Vice President Dick Cheney, who responded to the 2002 midterm elections by advocating in favor of more than $1 trillion in tax cuts. Quote, he said, Reagan proved that deficits don't matter. We won the midterm elections. This is our due, end quote, said the vice president. The other side now wants to adopt the posture of budget cutters, but when it gets right down to it, they want to be able to make sweetheart deals without having to pay for them. Nor is this sleight of hand or hypocritical actions an isolated event. Less than a month ago, Republicans successfully held unemployment benefits for Americans hostage till they got their wish. More Bush-era tax cuts for the people making more than $1 million a year. That package added another $140 billion to the deficit. Didn't seem to bother them, although that obviously, as they have told the world, is their number one priority. And just this week, Republican new members ushered in the new Congress with a $2,500 plate fundraiser at the W Hotel in downtown Washington. And lobbyists and political action committee members and other exclusive guests were treated to a night of drinks and entertainment by country singer Leanne Rimes. Those who donated up to $50,000 were treated to a VIP suite at the W, along with the rest of the night's entertainment. Last month, the incoming chairman of the House Financial Services Committee offered his own assessment of Republican oversight. He told the Birmingham News in Alabama, in Washington, the view is that the banks are to be regulated. My view is that Washington and the regulators are there to serve the banks, end quote. And according to Politico, the incoming chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee is looking for ways to make government more responsive to Wall Street and their corporate uh, allies like Big Oil, Big Pharma, and Big Health. Instead of all this business as usual, and we are headed right back into where we were before 2006, what I'd like to see is an honest attempt to create a set of rules that provide for openness, transparency, and good government. This set of rules is not that document. And I hope the other side, who I believe have good intentions, will join us in supporting this effort, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen, woman reserves the balance of her time, gentlemen.